Oh, the Jesus way is the way of peace. Oh, the Jesus way is the way of peace. Oh, the Jesus way is the way of peace. When he is king, all wars will cease. May his peace begin with me. I'm gonna beat my sword. Into a plow. Into a plow. Gonna beat my sword. Gonna beat my sword. Into a plow. Into a plow. Gonna, gonna beat my sword into a plow. Christ is king in my life now. May his peace begin with me. With this program, we will be doing a first on Brethren Voices, going live to China through the media of Zoom. For those not familiar with the Church of the Brethren, we feel a need to share a bit about our 300-year-old denomination. Hello, this is Brent Carlson. Welcome to Brethren Voices. The Church of the Brethren is small in number, approximately 99,000 members, with nearly 1,000 congregations in the United States. But its outreach has been seen in numerous countries, and we have sister churches in Nigeria, Dominican Republic, Haiti, India, Brazil, Spain, and Venezuela. The Church of the Brethren is a body of Christians committed and striving to continue the work of Jesus, peacefully, simply, and as a community attempting to live out its faith. Based in the Anabaptist and Pietist faith traditions, the Church of the Brethren is a historic peace church which celebrated its 300th anniversary in 2008. Following World War II, the Brethren, together with the United Nations, joined forces to assist European countries recovering from starvation and devastation with what was known at the time as the Heifer Project. Today, it is known as Heifer International, which has assisted millions out of hunger and poverty around the world. Brethren have established hospitals and schools in areas where none existed. In 1911, Brethren founded a hospital, Yang Chuan Yo Ai Hospital, in Pingding, Shanxi Province, China. Since January 2020, our special guests have been serving as global mission and service workers for the Church of the Brethren at this hospital, Yong Chuan Yo Ai Hospital, in Pingding, China. It's our pleasure to introduce Rosha Lee and Eric Miller, who on March 8th of this year began serving as co-executive directors of Global Mission for the Church of the Brethren. Rosha and Eric, welcome to Brethren Voices. It's indeed our pleasure to have you with us on Zoom today. First thing I want to do is just to say we're excited about hearing your story. That's what we do best on Brother and Voice, is just let people tell their story and, and share their experiences. And you started, you were born in different countries, you grew up in different places with different cultures, and somehow you met, and now your next journey is going to take you to being the co-executive directors of the Global Mission for Church of the Brethren. So we want to hear about it all. So... <laughs> Uh, Eric, can we just start with you? We understood you grew up in, in York, Pennsylvania, and that's a community been, that's been watching Brethren Voices for almost 16 years. Can you tell us about your, your beginnings, your family? Okay, yeah, so, so I, well, I was born in Lancaster County, actually, but then we, my parents moved the family to York when I was three. And there we attended the York First Church of the Brethren, is where I grew up. Um, and that's where I attended until I went to college. And I went to Juniata College. So I've had those church connections for a long time. So okay. you, went, you went to Juniata College. And then, yeah. then what happened? <laughs> um, well, then I went to graduate school at the University of Pittsburgh. Um, to study anthropology, cultural anthropology. And I should say, okay, so when I was in college, I came to China for the first time. When I was a junior, I did my junior year abroad with um, BCA, 
I think it was still Brethren Colleges Abroad then before they just changed to the acronym. So I spent a year in China in 1988, 1989, well, almost a year, an academic year, and started learning Chinese. Um, that was the first time I'd ever been in an airplane. I flew to China. Oh my goodness. 36 trip through Seoul and Hong Kong. We actually had started in Hong Kong for, for a few days before we came to China. I graduated from college. I um, actually came back to China for a few months to continue studying Chinese. And then I, I went to graduate school. Um, and that took a long time <laughs> to finish. But I was in Pittsburgh, and then I was back in China several times during, during those years as well. And I directed the Brethren College of the Broad Program one year. And I came back to Nanjing to study Chinese for a year. And then I did research in a village. So I want to know, how did you, what's so fascinating about China? Why, why, why the China connection? How did that, that was it a dream? Yeah. Was it uh, something just happened and you started finding yourself something going on? Yeah, you know, actually, I didn't have any particular connection to China. It was, I was studying anthropology in college, and I thought it was important if I was going to understand humanity, it was important to understand people from other cultures, not just Western cultures. And it was important to learn a language. And we didn't have that many options at Juni out of college in the 80s. I really had a choice between Japan and China, because I didn't have enough language to go to Europe. I'd studied some French, but I didn't have enough French to go there. So, so I decided to come to China. And I think really it was part of the Brethren background. I was more interested maybe in a more developing country than, than in Japan. So that's really the reason I chose China. There was no particular, I, some people had like, they had whatever reason to come to study China. They had some family connection, but I really didn't. Okay, I'm gonna come back yeah. to that. I wanna ask you more about that. But... Yeah, I can ask more about that. That's fine. I don't, you know, yeah, I don't know if I. Ro Rosha, answer. tell us about your growing up and and um, your your background and how you got and your education. Um, I was born in Shouyang, uh, where the Church of the Brethren, one of the Church of the Brethren mission uh, stations, mission. Yeah. Uh huh. Please. Um, so well, that's Shanxi uh, province too. Is that the yeah, same? Shanxi, 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 yeah, Shouyang, Shanxi. Uh, where is the, about one hour drive from Pingding, where we are living now. So uh, and you say Shan, I, Shanxi, Shanxi province. Shanxi, Shanxi province. Okay. So about an hour from where you you grew up, an hour from where you're living now. Pingding. Pingding was the uh, Church of the Brethren mission, um, uh, mission, where the mission start. Yeah, it was the first and mission the, site. For the like the general of office in Pingding. Yeah. Your family, do you have, are your parents still living? Yes, my parents are still living in Shouyang, where I was born. And I have a sister. Uh, right now, she is living in, the, in Maryland. In Maryland, U.S.? Uh-huh. Okay. Uh, five years ago, uh, she quit her job and decided to go to the States to study. So she finished her MBA program, then she got a job in Maryland, and then now she's... And she also uh, goes to uh, Church of the Brennan Church in Frederick. Oh. Frederick, Maryland. Is it Fredericksburg? Frederick, Frederick, Maryland. Frederick, Frederick, Maryland. Yeah, Fredericksburg is Virginia. Rosha, it's, it's very unusual for people to come to the United States from China. So for you and your sister to come here, was that difficult? Was, did you have to go through the visa process and apply for special permissions? Yes. Uh, we we should go through the apply the visa um, and uh, apply the school um, study language everything is is very challenging. Well, as a mm. backup, I mean, we met in Beijing. Rosa and I met. I was working in Beijing, uh -huh. 
in 2001 to 2003, and we met there. And um, then, uh, actually, SARS happened, which was that earlier pandemic, and our program was canceled. So I came back to the U.S., and then Rocha came over to the U.S. to visit, and we got married in New Haven, Connecticut. Um, and then she went back to China because she was on a visitor's visa at that time. So she came back to China and applied for the immigrant visa as a spouse, which so took a year <laughs> to get. <laughs> so in the meantime, we took a we sort of a honeymoon trip to Rome um, since she wasn't able to come to the U.S. during that time. And then in the middle of all that, you went to school. Did you go to the, the, the theological seminary? on that the first trip to the United States? No, uh, the first trip uh, was in 2003 to 2004. So I was, I was having the uh, visit visa to, to visit Eric in New Haven, Connecticut. So like Eric said just now, we got married. Uh, then uh, I went back to China again because of the visit visa uh, after the marriage. So uh, my second time uh, to come to the state uh, holding the uh, immigrant visa, it was 2000, at, at the end of the 2005. Uh, I think 2005. Uh -huh. uh, so, uh, in 2006, I spent one and a half years to exploring, to explore uh, what I want to study, um, to prepare the language. So in 2007, uh, I enrolled the uh, Wartburg Theological Seminary. You had actually been to the United States several times and for quite a while before you went. Uh -huh. Well, at least at least two years by then. Uh huh. About two years by at least by going to school. And now, now, so you've been married almost eight, fifteen years. For about yeah, because it was yeah. two thousand three. Two thousand three. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> well, how should we say almost eighteen Dinner. years? It was a 2004, but I came in 2004. It was all in the war. Yeah. Uh -huh. but. Well, and you have a daughter. And, yes. and what's, her, what's your daughter's name? Joanna. Joanna. And, and how, how old, old is she? She is seven. Seven. In that, when you were studying anthropology, you, you were interested in China at that time. And then you continued that interest at the University of Pittsburgh? Yeah, so I started, I mean, I came to China and started learning Chinese in China when I was a junior. And then, um, actually, when I graduated from college, I, I spent a few weeks traveling in India. I thought I might shift my interest to India, um, but I decided to stick with China since I'd started learning the language and so forth. So when I went to graduate school, I focused on China and spent the time, continued studying the language. It took time to learn the language. And I did a, a research project on aging, a family care for the elderly in rural China. I spent a year living in a village in China to do that research. And I graduated. When were you in the little village in China? I was in uh, 90, 1997 and 1998. Okay. And that was in a different province, though, in Shandong province. After that is when you went to Johns Hopkins, and that was in China. One of the purposes of that was to improve my Chinese language skills so that I could do the research that followed. How was his Chinese? His Chinese is much, much better than my English. I don't know, I don't know about that. Yeah. yeah, well, I think you're both doing very, very well, and I'm impressed with your bilingual Chinese, but I, I still feel like it's not great. Um, I should say, there's one thing I want to back up a little bit on, because I think it's kind of important to our story, which is, and Rosha mentioned that her hometown was the mission site of the Church of the Brethren, but we didn't know that when we met, and we didn't know that when we got married. Now, that's something we discovered later on. 
and maybe, I mean, she can talk about this, you might want to ask about, but I mean, she, the, the church was meeting, when she was a little girl, the church was meeting in, in a house. The government had taken over the church building, so they were meeting in a house near her home where she grew up. So she would have she would actually ended up playing on the street outside of the church where the, the church people were meeting. She didn't know that at the time. Mm-hmm. And she walked by the school. I, uh, the, I walked uh, by uh, the girls' school gate. Um, of the church on the way to my elementary school every day. Every day? Every day, yes. Yeah, but I didn't realize, know. But... I didn't know when I was little, when I was young, um, until we discovered um, the Church of the Brandon established the church in my hometown. Uh, during the seminary study uh, for my thesis, uh, I did the research about the mission work history of Church of the Brennan uh, in my hometown. Uh, so I spent a summer uh, to mm-hmm. interview the elders, the uh, old people who participated in the church a long time ago, uh, then uh, discovered a lot of things. Uh, I said, the pastor, Every day on the way to school, I passed the girls' school's gate um, and the, the, the original gate and the name were still there uh, a couple of years ago. Now it's, it's all turned down. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I uh, talked to my family and found out that my grandmother, my mother's mother, went to the girls' school. Uh, so that's uh, that's the only education my grandmother got. So she was able to read and write. And at, at that time, uh, so a lot of people were jealous. Wow, she got the, a woman, she got the education. Because a lot of girls were never allowed to go to school. Um, yeah, they wouldn't have had schooling for girls typically. So that was a really big... I think a big thing that they set up schools for girls. They had boys' schools that they set up too. And the fact that her family, her parents wanted her to get an education. So that's that was very important too. Yeah. Rosha and Eric, we want to take a short break. We're going to, um, we just want to let people know that the, the Brethren have assisted causes for peace all historically all over the world. And we're going to take a break with a message from Heifer International. Hi, I'm Alton Brown and I used to have a goat. Where did my goat go? Well, it went to a family who really needed it, just like the uh, heifer cow I used to have and the water buffalo, which was really too big for my place anyway. Now why send livestock? Why not say tractors? Because giving an animal is like giving someone a small business. All that wool, the milk, the eggs turn into income for medicine, school, clothing, a better home, a sustainable livelihood. It even produces fertilizer for crops. And of course, it makes more livestock because you know, animals make baby animals. That's what they do. The next thing you know, the family that you gave your gift to is passing on the gift of the animal's offspring to another family who does the same thing and so on and so on until pretty soon you have helped to lift an entire community out of poverty, all with your gift to Heifer International. That is a recipe for lasting change. The Brethren have long been involved in helping people around the world, and we're very happy to have a connection with Heifer International and what they're doing. So now we're gonna go back to China and talk with Eric, Rosha, and Joanna. So here we are, back, back with you. Thank you for joining us. Joanna, can you hear? <laughs> this is a little strange, but we're, we're only about uh, eight, 16 hours difference, maybe 15 hours difference, and about 8,000 miles away. And we wanted to meet you. Rochelle, we were doing a little research about your background and we found that 
you got a bachelor's degree in public relations at the South Central University in Shangsha, Hunan Province, and and uh, then a your theological degree in um, master is a master's in theology development and evangelism. Where did you where did you discover or decide these were the this is the direction you wanted to go with your education? Um, for the college degree, actually in China we don't have much choice uh, because we have to attend the cross national test to have the score. So according to the score, then which school, uh, which uh, major you can go, and then they, um, uh, uh, I, was, I was assigned, right? I was yeah, assigned, not, actually not I. I have the right to choose uh, my major. So um, according to my score, so I was assigned to this major, uh, but finally I uh, found out I like the I like the major. Mm -hmm. You like public uh, relations. So uh, I was actually uh, I was supposed to work for the government um, because I was a party member <laughs> uh, in 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 the college. Uh, but uh, but uh, uh, after graduation, I chose to go to Beijing to work. Then I was looking for the job. Firstly, I was working for uh, Bank of China for the uh, administrative position for two years. Then I was looking for another opportunity. Um, uh, because I don't think the, the work the work in at bank um, was kind of nurture. Yeah, it's a <laughs> nurture me. Well, it's interesting um, because working in the bank was considered a very good job at that time. It's uh, sort of a, a good government job, good pay, good benefits, uh -huh. kind of prestigious. But, uh, yeah. I, uh, but I was uh, always uh, feeling like I want to do some meaningful thing, more meaningful things. Talk about work, mm. like how you got work for work. Okay. Um, so after I moved to the state in the end of the 2005, so I was thinking to go to a master program. Uh, so originally I was uh, interested in public health. And also um, was curious about Jesus and theology because I didn't go to church. I didn't have any Christian background while I was living in China. Uh, so um, after living in the US, I went to church with Eric, with Eric's family. Uh, now I was sitting uh, in the church uh, with the music, uh, listening to the sermon. Now I was crying. I was just uh, crying. Um, then so touched by the Holy Spirit that um, I was uh, curious, who is Jesus? Um, why so many people go to church uh, every Sunday? Um, and uh, 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 the first, at that time, I didn't speak much English. So I go to some ESL, uh, ESL uh, classes. Mm, I met some people. Uh, I go to church and I met some people from church. They are very, very, um, very, very nice, very friendly, very hospitable. Hospitable. Hospitable, yeah. Uh, so um, I was thinking, mm, mm, why people don't know me? then they are so nice to me. Uh, by that time, we moved to Dubuque, Iowa. Now I was not able to drive. I don't, I don't, have, I don't know how to drive. Uh, so, uh, so we were looking some schools around so that I can walk to the school. And then we, uh, then we found out 
uh, Wartburg Theological Seminary, which is a Lutheran seminary, but they have a program, uh, Master of Arts in Theology, Development, and Evangelism. They, uh, in, they include uh, the public health courses uh, each semester, and uh, also combined the community development and the theology. And it's also a program that um, uh, provide for the international students. So um, except for me, uh, I'm the only one from Asia, from China, and the rest of my classmates, uh, seven classmates are from Africa, from <clears throat> uh, Ghana, Nigeria, uh, Ethiopia, Sierra Leone, um, Madagascar. Uh, so you suddenly got a, you got an international exposure. Yeah. yeah, it's a very good experience to uh, hear, uh, like you said, hear people's story every day. Um, um, uh, to uh, for me, it's uh, I eye-opening and mind-opening to uh, to uh, to to know what's happening in this world most of uh, most of my classmates they are all already pastors in serving in the church or church leaders now i didn't have uh so i learned a lot from them Approximately 10 years ago, when Chinese hospital officials were developing plans to celebrate the 100th anniversary of the hospital started by the Brethren in China in 1911, they attempted to find the Church of the Brethren in the United States. You'll hear more about that fascinating story with Eric and Rosha in the next edition of Brethren Voices. Until then, this is Brent Carlson wishing you peace. Tread, all those who tread the path he trod, the path he trod. All those who tread, all those who tread the path he trod, the path he trod. All those who tread the path he trod shall be called the friends of God. May his peace begin with me. Oh, the Jesus way, is the way of peace. Oh, the Jesus way, is the way of peace. Oh, the Jesus way is the way of peace. When he is king, all wars will cease. May his peace begin with me.